Dr. Robert Epstein, um, explain, you write in your, in your uh, latest uh, article, no matter which weak candidate the Democrats ultimately nominate, and even with Russia's help, President Donald Trump cannot win the 2020 election. For that matter, in races nationwide in which the projected winning margins are small, under 5% or so, Republicans in general are likely to lose. That is quite a statement. Back it up. Well, unfortunately, uh, this, th- those statements are not only true, I'm, I'm actually understating uh, the gravity of the problem. So, to understand what's happening here, you have to go back to, uh, to, to what my Democrat friends call Armageddon Day. You call it Election Day, mm. uh, 2016, but... Uh, they call it Armageddon Day. Uh, you have to go back to that day. You have to look at that uh, an one-hour video that leaked uh, from Google uh, right after the election in which uh, Google's top mm-hmm. executives are saying straight out, this is a disaster. This is a calamity. Uh, we're never going to let this happen again. You have to look at some of the whistleblowers who have since been fired by Google or have quit. And they are telling us that from that day forward, Google and to a lesser extent, the other tech companies made a decision. We are going to use every single technique we have available to us to shift votes and make sure that Trump is not reelected. So that's all a matter of record. Now, also a matter of record is, is meticulous scientific research I've been doing since 2013 that shows the power that these companies have to shift votes. And I actually can calculate for each technique how many votes they can shift. So you ask, what are the techniques? What can they do? Well, the techniques are unbelievable. They've never existed before in human history. I've been stumbling on them one by one. carefully studying them with tens of tens of thousands of participants in multiple experiments in multiple countries. The techniques are unbelievable. So I, I, I can start with the first one I discovered, which is SEAM, the search engine manipulation effect. This, this is simply the fact that if one candidate is favored over another in Google search results, which virtually everyone uses, that shifts votes to that candidate. And people can't see if there's any bias in search results. Almost no one can see it. Correct. And there's no record of it. Yes, this is called, internally at Google, these are called ephemeral experiences. We know this from a leak out of Google of emails to the Wall Street Journal in 2018, where one Googler is saying to fellow Googlers, it's hard to say, uh, how can we use ephemeral experiences to shift people's views on Trump's travel ban? So these are ephemeral experiences. Like you, 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 you type in a search term, you get some search results. It's that, that information you're seeing on your screen is generated just for you, generated on the fly. It affects you because you're, you're likely to click at what's at the top. So it definitely has an impact on you. And it disappears, and it's gone forever, and it's not stored anywhere. So that's ephemeral experiences. It's the perfect kind of manipulation because no one can go back in time and figure out what you were shown. It's it's perfect. And that technique alone can easily shift more than 20% of undecided voters without their knowledge up to 80% in some demographic groups. That was just my first discovery. That was way back in 2013. Since then, I've discovered about a dozen techniques like that, which are controlled entirely by these executives at these couple of companies. And you can't counteract what they're doing. It's not like a billboard. You see, you put up you, your billboard, I put right. up my billboard. Right. You buy your TV commercial, I buy my TV commercial. These techniques are nothing like that because it's one thing if you want to, you know, buy some ads and post them on Facebook or something, you know, but then your competitor will do the same and so on. But what if Facebook itself, what if Google itself, what if the platforms, 
want to support one candidate or, or one party, you cannot counteract what they're doing. Generally speaking, you can't even see what they're doing. Uh, okay, so y- I remember as a kid, and you, you, you've you talked about this. I remember as a kid, they said, oh, they're editing films and movie theaters to make you drink Coca-Cola more. They're putting, they're putting frames in that, that, uh, that show the, uh, an ice-cold Coke, and it makes you want to get up in the middle and go to the refreshment stand. Or, or Disney is putting in secret sex messages into the... That's nothing, nothing compared to... To this, that's correct. Those are that's called uh, subliminal influ- influence, and uh, it's it's a real thing, but it's very, very, very tiny. It's so tiny that uh, we've never even passed any laws in the United States to prohibit it. The, the UK does prohibit it, but we don't even pro- prohibit it because, again, the evidence shows it has such a tiny effect. But the effects that I've discovered are humongous. For example. <laughs> For example, uh, there's one which I call DDE, which is the uh, differential demographics effect. It, it, this is so simple. In 2018, on Election Day, Google posted a big message on its home page, which would, would have been seen on Election Day 500 million times by Americans. They replaced the word Google with the words, go vote. So the vote reminder. And they got tremendous praise that day. Look at that great thing, that great public service, you know, that uh, Google is doing. That was not a public service. That was a vote manipulation because Google knows the demographics of the people who are going to see that. And they knew very precisely, I mean, down to the last digit, they knew exactly how many more Democrats would see that reminder than Republicans. If that reminder was seen by everyone that day, that would have given 800,000 more votes to Democrats than to Republicans. Uh, so, so search suggestions. Uh, I mean, I could go on and on because we're actually, we just opened up a line of research on a whole new manipulation, which is, I think, going to be bigger than all the others. Well, I know we're doing, we're doing a special uh, this Wednesday night, and you're going to be part of it. Um, this Wednesday night, we're talking about the stealing of elections. How secure are our elections? Everybody's talking about Russia. Forget about Russia. Forget about Russia. How about this? This has a much bigger potential uh, to really end uh, democracy, and, and quite honestly, Free will, you know, there's there's a debate and I see it happening in the the circles of Silicon Valley and those those kinds of people. And they're now starting to debate what is free will? Is there anything like free will? Does it even exist or will it exist in the future? If you're right, doctor, and I believe you are because you've backed it up with the evidence, it dismiss you think you have free will, but you don't. You're actually being manipulated all the time. Well, it, yes, and 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 here is a quote from a, a British economist who was a professor uh, in the United States that when he said this back in 1957, a world of unseen dictatorship is conceivable, still using the forms of democratic government, and that is what we're up against. And Eisenhower, 1961, yeah. in that famous speech of his. Yeah. He warned not only about the rise of a military-industrial complex, he, warned, he actually warned about the rise of a technological elite that could take control over public policy without people knowing. That's where we are now. That's exactly what has happened. Uh, I mean, I have the numbers. I have the data. My work is meticulous in all respects. And... As I say, we're just about we're we're just about to get numbers on a whole new technique that we've discovered. I'm telling you, this stuff is frightening, and the fact that mainstream media and that my friends, the Democrats, are pretty much ignoring what I'm saying—not all of them, but most of them are—that's outrageous. And that's because they're the ones benefiting at the moment from these manipulations. 
All right. So I, maybe we'll have you back tomorrow because I would like to hear about the the new um, the new way in, if you will, on on what you've discovered. Um, but we also really want. I urge you, if if you are thinking, you know what, I want to donate money, I want to help on something. This is probably the biggest thing that you could do to help preserve the republic. Um, and, and that is making sure these tech companies are held responsible. He's the only one doing this. He needs to raise an awful lot of money. I want you to go to mygoogleresearch.com. If you have, I don't care if it's $5 or $10,000, um, please, please consider this as a donation. Um, you go to mygoogleresearch.com. That's mygoogleresearch.com. Uh, and hopefully we're going to have some uh, some breaking news for you on Wednesday um, about some of this research. But we really need your um, support, and he needs your support financially. MyGoogleResearch.com. 